So most of us are probably never going to be able to go to the moon or to Mars. But here on the big island in Hawaii, 8,000 feet above sea level, this white dome is called High Seas and it's a habitat where researchers and scientists are studying what it might be like and preparing to get to the red planet and to the moon. I'm going to go inside, check it out and then see what it's like to live as an astronaut in this rocky, crazy, beautiful terrain. stands for Hawaii Space Exploration, Analog and Simulation, and it was built in 2013 on the site of an abandoned quarry. The habitat accommodates six astronauts and it has sleeping quarters, a kitchen, two bathrooms, and even a space to work out. These workstations let you talk to mission control or the outside world, but messages are delayed anywhere from a few seconds to over 20 minutes to simulate the delay from the moon or Mars. So, so in a nutshell, the, the purpose of these missions um, is to test as many uh, scientific experiments and technologies that are going to help prepare, get humans to the moon and Mars. So we need to test the spacesuits, um, the communication systems. We bring rovers sometimes on some missions to test there. And recently we had an experiment designed by students in Slovakia where we were collecting our hair from the crew members, oh, wow. um, dissolving it in various chemicals and then using that as fertilizer. So there's a lot of stuff we can do here. It's a great environment for that and a really well-built facility. So this kitchen's pretty big. It's uh, <laughs> probably the biggest space we have in this habitat. And the reason for that is that actually the very first mission that started here and for which this place was actually built was a NASA mission uh, focusing on food for astronauts. They're trying to figure out what's the best kind of food to give people on long duration missions. They had to choose between freeze dried food or, you know, stuff out of tubes and cans, that kind of thing. And so they were testing it for about four months and they found that the best food is actually the freeze dried food because of the cooking element. The right. fact that you actually have to spend several hours rehydrating that food, cooking it in this big kitchen. So this is what freeze-dried carrots look like. Very unappetizing. So not appetizing. <laughs> and then there's things like, you know, freeze-dried pineapple, for example. And that's actually something tasty. Hopefully there's some left in here for you to try. This one you can actually munch on. So we do like to have that as a snack. There's oh, a that tiny little good. bit there. I'll take this a little bit. Mm. <laughs> Mmm, that's nice. It's you like know, and candy. It's pretty, you know, it has a nice smell and mm, everything. It reminds me of the tropics. <laughs> like being in Hawaii, but not being Not in being Hawaii here, really. Must be tough. Yeah. Hey, well, let's have a look at the sleeping quarters upstairs. Each crew member gets their own room. Well, that's nice. So a little, little bit of some privacy. privacy. Yeah. So this, for example, this was my commander's room. Because <laughs> unfortunately, these walls aren't very thick. So right. even if a person is snoring three doors down, <laughs> you can, down, hear you can still hear it. Oof. But it's better than having it coming from both sides. You know, just one <laughs> one is enough. Exactly. And everything here is made to be, you know, accommodate as many things as possible. Mm -hmm. So for example, this is your stool to sit on. You know, behind the table. Yeah. But it's also a storage container. Oh, uh -huh. clever. And I mean, it, it kind of works, but then if you imagine you maybe have your suitcase, which you know, you could fit underneath, but maybe you have something else. Suddenly it's like, you yeah, can't really yeah. move around too much <laughs> in here. I want to sit on the bed okay, and lie on the bed and see how comfortable this is. Because if you're here for, you know, ostensibly eight months on a mission, you want to make sure that you're getting good sleep. Oh, it's, it's a foam mattress. It feels yeah, pretty yeah. comfy. Okay. We try to make them be like, as comfortable as possible, oh, exactly for that reason. That's pretty good. I'm not going to put my feet on your duvet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the pretty pillow okay. should be fairly comfortable bad. too. I mean, I'm on 5'11", so I could feasibly fit here not, without too much discomfort. I wouldn't want to be any taller though. Uh, we've had some 6'2 guys in here, okay. but I think they had to sleep diagonally. <laughs> yeah, kind of like wriggle into the corner. Yeah, and, like, but then you have to fetus. worry about you know right. hitting your head on that. So, <laughs> so a bit of a compromise. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I think maybe the astronaut life is all right after all. Well, this is definitely the smallest room in the habitat. And it's definitely one of the most important rooms right. here. <laughs> like we are very limited in the amount of time we can take a shower. So we have a timer just here. Every crew member has to record 
uh, the amount of time they shower for, and they're only allowed eight minutes per week. Oh, so take that in, you know, eight minutes per week. That's a minute a day and a little extra. Yeah, and then probably the most important element here mm -hmm. is the, the quote-unquote space toilet <laughs> slash compost toilet. So, so I've done my business. <laughs> let's, let's pretend, yeah, let's pretend yeah. that's We done. don't want to see that. <laughs> so then we have this basically material that's kind of to feed the microbes. Okay. And then there's a special spray for the microbes okay. to keep them happy. All right. Now you're going to take this handle out just here. Okay. And now clockwise, very, very important to go clockwise. clockwise all right. You're going to turn it until that hole comes back. And this way you're kind of mixing your new additions with what was there before. And then they're going to take their time, usually a few days to a few weeks, to digest what's going on in there. And then there's a drawer at the bottom where we can open up and get rid of uh, the stuff we don't want. It's quite literally a crappy job. <laughs> <laughs> Fun part for us is suiting up. Yes. With the spacesuits. Okay. Exactly. Astronauts don't just stay inside when they're on a mission. Wearing a simulated spacesuit, they can go on extravehicular activity, or EVA. They collect samples, biominerals, and help map out areas outside the habitat. And now we venture outside. Almost. We have to go for the airlock system. Airlock right? first. <laughs> Okay, so normally we would have someone on the inside, the so-called HAPCOM, the main communicator from the habitat, mm -hmm. who would start a countdown for us. So then we would have to wait here. We'd put our masks on. This. Yep. Yeah. The air oh, is all good to go. Fine. Thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Okay, time to go to Mars. scientific stations we have around here uh, they they're multiple and they have all kind of different purposes uh, it can be anything from having seismometers measuring the kind of uh, activity happening here on this volcano because Mauna Loa is still active so there might even be an eruption <laughs> so we need to monitor that and be careful but we also monitor the weather uh, various um, gases in the air and things like that so they're relevant both to local research here in Hawaii but also to uh, planetary science research related to the moon and Mars. Who has to maintain all of it? Uh, we have different scientists that maintain it. So when we're out of simulation, uh, we agree with them and we take them here, they do it themselves. But if something needs to happen during a simulated mission, then actually we come in here with spacesuits and then we have to, you know, do everything with these thick gloves. Something that would take five minutes without the spacesuit took us almost 45 minutes. Wow, I'm glad I'm not doing it today. Yeah. <laughs> It looks beautiful. I just, it's, it's, it's of this world yet of not of this world. Exactly. It is very, very unusual, but <laughs> this kind of environment is what you would find on the surface of Mars or similar things on the moon because both planetary bodies um, have parts that are covered in kind of lava type material. So on Mars, you know, even the color is very similar to what we're walking on. It's actually geologically accurate and we can do scientific research relevant to studying, you know, the surface of Mars. With a slightly different spacesuit, probably. Yes. <laughs> this is not quite what different. it will look like. I mean, you know, close. the surface of Mars, I mean, um, on Mars, you would only feel about a third of the gravity we feel here. So, you know, it's appropriate that the suits are a bit lighter, you know, <laughs> yeah. it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as heavy as the several hundred pound uh, spacesuits you have up in space. I mean, you can't even move around in those. Right. <laughs> well, this is heavy enough for me. I'm telling you, this is more than enough weight, more than enough constriction. Being at over 8,000 feet elevation, you really feel it. This is tough. <sighs> wow, that was something else. It was like being on another planet. I don't think I'm quite ready for Mars or the moon just yet, but that's exactly what it's going to be like. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode and catch you next time. <laughs>
ain't pretty. That's what happens. <laughs>